I think it was probably like six years ago, maybe seven, actually maybe even more, I got introduced to this superset com com complex and concept. And I think it was actually first popularized by Charles Polkin. I think he actually had this in one of his training uh, programs and it was titled something like Plateau Buster. Like if you're stuck in a squatting plateau, then do this. And I've certainly adapted it since then, but the idea is that whatever the tempo or rep scheme is, you take your front squat up to maximal loading in that. And then after a short rest period, so it's like, in this case, I'm doing three reps with a pause. I'm gonna do a heavy set of three for a front squat. Then I take a little bit of a rest, re-rack it, maybe 15 seconds, go right to a back squat. Your back squat, as Charles used to talk about for balanced athletes, should be roughly 20% or 25% greater than your front squat. So you are gonna be stronger in the back squat. So you can come right off of tired legs in the front squat and you can hit more reps in the back squat. So it's kind of like taking yourself to your limit, then changing the mechanical position so that you can load or you can produce more you know, effort and power and then go right into a back squat. So in this case, I'm doing three, right into anywhere from four to six reps in the back squat. And that's how I'm training squats in this upcoming cycle of Persist. Charles actually added on one more piece, which was uh, a difficult strict pull up at the end of that complex. So front squat, back squat, strict pull up to max effort. That, that combination of three movements back to back to back was a massive, massive intensity dose, which created this huge, you know, hormonal neuro, neuro endocrine hormonal nervous system stimulus that would just get total body you know strength increases uh, anyhow use it effectively a bunch of years ago in training now we're just giving people a dose of it and persist and i'm giving it a little test right now for the weeks that are coming um, in the training cycle Squatting is hard. Um, I think I, I always wanted to be that athlete that could just be like, it's heavy day, let's get after it, I'm, I love it. But man, lifting heavy is just, it's so intense. It always is really hard. I don't, I'm not the guy that's just like psyched to do it every day <laughs> <laughs> or every few days or once a week even. So I have to overcome that mental block and just be like, got to do it and that's why i like to play around with different formats that make it so that i'm feels kind of like a new stimulus each week for me it's still heavy i keep trying to find a way to make heavy not feel heavy and it's always heavy <laughs> Could have done it without the belt. <laughs> the belt. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> hey, the belt gives me confidence. Whew. Another note, pro tip. If you wanna learn how to breathe correctly for heavy lifting, there's three cues. 
Take a deep breath, brace, and then bark. <laughs> the deep breath helps you organize, bracing, gets you tight for the lift, and then when you're coming up, you gotta make a grunt, you gotta bark, you gotta, you gotta be audible. Because when you're audible, that's the air coming out, forcefully coming out. If you, if you yell, scream, bark, whatever the sound is, I don't know, mine sounds kind of like an otter, like a, a sea lion or something like that. <laughs> uh, borderline like I'm throwing up. But anyhow, it's just getting that air out, which is, that's power, that's strength. Okay, that's all I had to say. <laughs>